Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about imagination. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Hi Frederick, thanks for all the advice that you've been giving us. No problem. I have a question. You talked about senior developers being good architects. I have 11 years of relevant IT experience, but issues but the issue is that I could never be part of any application that was built from scratch and hence any discussion related to architecture and, uh, and architecture and design. Can you suggest where I can start from uh, f where I can start from so that I can regain my lost confidence? I am good at identifying bugs or what piece of code what a piece of code does, but when it comes to building anything, I am totally blank. If uh, if I didn't know for a fact that my uh, my old co teammate uh, he is way too busy with his daughter to uh, to watch this, I would have almost ex suspected that he had, he would have uh, been the person who wrote this because I I used to work with a person like this uh, who has as I like he uh, it's a what I call an engine an engine developer. Uh, so basically, what I told the subscriber was that the the thing when when I say that a senior software developer, and I usually I would say that most people who at least the people who know what they're talking about uh, say that a software developer is like good with architecture or things like that. I know that this is something where you you kind of you you get immediately into the headspace. Oh, he's talking about architecture. Therefore, he must be talking about infrastructure or systems designs and things like that. And this is something that I, I'm not sure if I can relay this to in a way where you will get like a aha moment. But guys, uh, if you think about architecture as just at the infrastructure level, you're, you're actually just thinking about it from one perspective. A, archi a good architecture can exist at the code level. And if you really think about it, uh, the the architecture, like the well designed co uh, code, is something that then scales to the infrastructure level. That's what, as an example, microservices is all about. You start with this tiny little system, which has different domains and modules and so forth. And what usually happens is that that code base in that monolithic application it grows to a point where well, now we need to actually have separate services or different processes that are running this code. And the interactions, with this is usually how it goes, the interactions between these different pieces of code in the monolith, they, in many cases, they stay the same, even at the network level. Yes, because you put them in different projects or different um, running instances, well, it doesn't change the code. It's still the same thing. It's just at this larger scale, if that makes sense. So if you are good at designing code, well, you're not necessarily as good at architecture because there are more factors that play in, but you, then you have the foundation skills to actually make or good architectural decisions at the larger scale. It's just that, as I've said many times before to you, uh, when you scale something up, things get more complicated, but the foundation always starts the same. You start with one specific problem that is the core of the whole thing, and then you add more and more t stuff on top, the, the bigger it gets. This is why I preach that core skills is the best investment that you can possibly make as a software developer, because if you have core skills, and you're really good at the core, uh, core things of what it means to be a software developer, everything else becomes so much easier. It's like the root language or it's the root thing. So wh what I basically said to this subscriber is that I tried to explain that uh, if you find it hard to to imagine or to uh, to come up with ideas or things like that, then you are very much like my old co my old teammate. But on the other hand, if you are, say, the sort of person who has a lot of ideas, maybe, and a lot of creativity, and can come up with uh, fun experiments or new proof of concepts and stuff like that, and you usually are the very like enthusiastic about building and making things and coming up with these sorts of ideas, right? Then you're more like myself. And there are pros and there are cons. And what I like to say is that there's two types of 
software developers usually. Everybody's on a range in this, but I, uh, when it comes to seniors, as far as I've seen, there are engines and then there are visionaries. So if you are an engine type of developer, usually your trademark is that you comprehend things and you're pretty good, as long as you feel that you have a sense of direction or something like that, you, you get results, you figure things out, and you're also usually very reliable. That is what I found at the very least. That uh, What I basically described was my old teammate. He was, well, he still is, he's still working as a software developer. Rock solid, super calm, super nice guy, could, like, he fixed all the bugs, whatever bug I produced, he would just spot them in the code review, or he would just figure things out, he knew everything about the system, etc, etc. That's the, the, his, his, uh, his type of person. A visionary type is much more about uh, a per, it's, it's a person who usually has a very good imagination and a talent for picturing things or for seeing how things will go. And as I said, everybody's on a scale here. And if you can find the best thing I find is usually if you can find people who complement each other. And that's why when I was working with my coworker, we were very strong on both sides. Like I was very much leaning towards the visionary type of character, and he was very much against the engine type. So when we worked together and we had a good working relationship, we made very good technical decisions and delivered a lot of value to the company because we were so perfectly matched. So if if you th reflect a little bit, you will find, usually, as I said, like if you are an engine, this, these are your positive sides. Your negative sides of being an engine is usually, as the subscriber is describing, uh, you're a little bit hard for you to like figure out new ideas or come up with. Uh, I mean, if you're the sort of person who never has any post-its in the, in the retros or you never have, or well, not never, but I hope that you understand, like you struggle with coming up with the new projects or c coming up with these sorts of things. But you, as long as you have a story or something like that, you deliver on time and you kind of know how the system works and you figure things out, then you are very much, in my opinion, towards the engine side. If you, uh, on the other hand, are the, in, if you have a lot of imagination and a lot of uh, uh, ideas and so forth, but on the, and in the same time, at the same time, you can also be very sloppy or you can be, feel frustrated when you're forced to do things that feel unstimulated or things like that, then you might be more of an imagination type. And what I've found, if you want to train these sides, uh, is that if you are, if you want to train your engine side, uh, I believe that the best way for you to do that is to read code reviews. The reason why I believe that is because it, as an imagination type or a visionary type of uh, developer, you spend a lot of time in your own head usually. And that's very natural because you imagine how you would write things, how would you do things, how would, you, how would this work if you did this or that or this and so forth. And that is a very good thing if you're trying to come up with ideas, but it's a very bad thing if you're just trying to figure out what somebody else has done. And that is the heart and soul in what it means to be someone who comprehends an existing thing or how to figure out how a bug works or things like that. You're trying to figure out how did somebody else think? How does all of this fit together? You're not trying to come up with your own ideas. You're trying to find out what someone else has done. You can imagine later, but now it's about figuring out what's going on. And so reading code reviews is actually a very healthy exercise for you because it forces you to get out of your own head and, folk and try to get in the head of somebody else. And if you want to train your visionary side, uh, I very much recommend doing small experiments and products like that. I've, it, I, the reason why I believe that this is such a good thing is because the people who like used to pull to pull apart their uh, TVs or radios and set them and fiddle with things who were just interested in figuring out how things work or who experimented with if you find yourself building small libraries that do something or whatever like find a small experimental project with a problem that you find sort of interesting and try to figure out how you would build something to solve that small problem this is a creative process and the visionary type uh, of developers or people, they usually see patterns and that's where their ideas come from. And the more patterns you know, 
and I'm not talking about design patterns now. I'm talking about patterns in the universe, how people behave, how 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 code, um, how good abstractions look, and how different libraries do things. Like if this library does it that way and that one does it that way, what is the common pattern that I can see between them? What is working? What is not working? The more patterns you know, the better your own vision will be, because you will see other. You will be faced with a problem, and you will go. I've seen similar things here and here and here and based on what I've seen before I can probably think I can predict I can imagine that a good solution to this problem would be to do things in that way uh, that's at least what I've found so what I want you to take away from this is that if you're struggling to come up with ideas and be uh, uh, be better at like designing systems and architecture and so forth it's likely because you are more of an engine type of software developer and both being an uh, being an engine or being a visionary guys it really depends on what type of work you're doing because both of these types of uh, developers are they have a really big value if you put them in the right role they will produce like hell if you put them in the wrong role it's going to it's not it's going to be a bumpy ride and if they can, f if you can find two of these types of developers and work, is put them together and have them have a good relationship with each other, they will produce like hell. These, the, it's amazing to see them work. Like they, they, they usually form very fruitful uh, relationships. If you are an engine, try to start being a little bit more creative make small experimental projects maybe you can create that maybe you have some problem in your own code base maybe you have some process that could be a little bit better or maybe you could create a testing library or things like that i do these sorts of things all the time because i really like it so it does practice that part if you're more of a visionary and you struggle to be really good with details and like to really understand things and so forth uh, try to read more code reviews. Focus on reading code reviews because if you can get into a good flow where you figure out how somebody else does something and you try to just understand the the mindset of somebody else, you will actually get better at spotting details and taking your time to figure out what instead of like spending time in your own head. And that's a very healthy exercise. One person is not spending enough time in their head and the other person is spending too much time in their head. Have a great day.